looking at the age of the universe, a question uh, comes up as far as young Earth versus old Earth. So, so one question is, is that a, is that a first order issue? Is that an intramural uh, discussion? Um, and, then, and then if we could just go down uh, the panel here and just briefly state that how you approach that question as far as age of the universe. RC, is it an intramural discussion? Uh, not for some people. For some people, it's, it's an all or nothing issue. Um, when people ask me how old the earth is, I tell them I don't know, because I don't. On, and I'll tell you why I don't. In the first place is the Bible does not give us a date of creation. Now, it gives us hints and inclinations that would indicate, in many cases, a young earth. And at the, at the same time, you get all this expanding universe and all this astronomical dating and triangulation and all of that stuff coming from outside the church. That makes me wonder, and I'll tell you why. I believe firmly that all of truth is God's truth, and I believe that God has not only given revelation in sacred Scripture, but also in the sacred Scripture itself tells us that God reveals Himself in nature, which we call natural revelation. And I once asked a seminary class of mine that was a conservative group, I said, how many of you believe that the God's revelation in Scripture is infallible? And they all raised their hand. I said, well, how many of you believe that God's revelation in nature is infallible? And nobody raised their hand. It's the same God who's giving the revelation. But what they were getting at was they were saying not every scientific theory is compatible with the Word of God. And that's true. But historically, the church's understanding of special revelation, or the Bible, has been corrected by students of natural revelation with the Copernican Revolution. Both Calvin and Luther rejected Copernicus as a heretic in the 16th century. I don't know anybody in Orthodox Christianity today who's pleading for geocentricity. Do you? Do you know anybody? In that case, the church had to say, yeah, but the church has said, look, we misinterpreted the teaching of the Bible with respect to the solar system, and thank you, uh, scientists, for correcting our misunderstanding. And so I think that we can learn from uh, non-believing scientists who are studying natural revelation they may get a, a better sense of the truth from their study of natural revelation than I get from ignoring natural revelation. So I have a high view of natural revelation, as I'm saying. However, if something can be shown to be definitively taught in the Bible without question, and somebody gives me a theory from natural that they think is based on natural revelation that contradicts the Word of God, I'm going to stand with the Word of God a hundred times out of a hundred. But again, I have to repeat, I could have been a mistaken interpreter of the Word of God. But again, I don't, I don't have to face that problem because I believe that both spheres are God's spheres of revelation, and that truth has to be compatible. So if they seem to be in conflict, and if they are in conflict, if a theory of science, natural science, is in conflict with a theological theory and contradicts it, here's what I know for sure. Somebody's wrong. And I don't leap to the conclusion that it has to be the scientist. It may be the theologian. But nor do I leap to the conclusion that it has to be the theologian. It can well be the scientist, because we've got fallible human beings interpreting uh, infallible natural revelation, and fallible human beings interpreting uh, infallible special revelation. Now, having said that, I don't know. That's a long way to say I don't know how old the earth is, but I'd like to hear what Stephen says about that. 